in this class, we're just going to be talking about linear momentum. So just to kind of give a recap of what I'm talking about. So um, uh, let's see. So we're going to start with our oh, linear momentum. Okay. And does anybody remember what linear momentum is? So we're talking about mass multiplied by velocity is our momentum. Beautiful. Now, you would see this pattern a lot if you're playing pool, right? You have uh, one pool ball that's being hit by a blank one, right? But you have this has some mass that's being uh, applied in some velocity, and this is the second mass, and then this is the second velocity, right? So you'd have some kind of balance here of these two uh, equations. You have a balance of momentum, all right? So this application is, is similar. You're basically gonna apply the same understanding to fluid mechanics, okay? Um, we're gonna start using this equation and we're gonna look at the Reynolds transport theorem and how that equation changes for momentum. So let's go to the handy dandy Reynolds transport theorem. RTT. Okay. So again, we have dB of a system, dt is d dt across the control volume, little b density change in volume plus little b density directional velocity dA, okay? So this again is our Lagrangian perspective and this is our Eulerian perspective. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to substitute capital B and little b as uh, for, for this equation. So capital B is again our extensive parameter. And this is a function of mass. Capital B is gonna be mass multiplied by velocity. Little b again is our intensive property or parameter which is not a function of mass. So little b is capital B over m, which is just velocity. So I'm going to substitute these parameters into my our Reynolds transport theorem to, to arrive at a momentum equation. Capital B is mb here of the system. I'm just showing you the, the derivation for now to kind of sh show you how things come into play. Partials. And this is going to be velocity, density, change in volume, plus uh, velocity, density, directional velocity, dA. I want you to write down that this is directional velocity. And do you see these little v's? These are non-directional. Or these are just the magnitudes. Okay, this is, be, this is gonna be very, very important uh, because they're, they're very, very different things, okay? All right. So pay attention to the left-hand side of the equation, okay? So, so let's look at the left-hand side, which is dMV of the system over dt, okay? So if, if the mass is constant, we can pull it out of our equation. Okay, what is this equal to? Is that acceleration? That is acceleration. 
That's right. Good. Beautiful. So this is just the left hand side of the equation. So, so the left hand side of the equation is going to be mass multiplied by acceleration. Okay. Now, what is this? Mass multiplied by, by acceleration is what? Force. force. Exactly. This is force or Newton's second law. Okay, so I'm going to bring it back to the equation here. So the left hand side of our equation is not just mass multiplied by acceleration. The left hand side of the equation is the sum of external forces acting onto our system. So the left hand side of the equation is the sum of forces onto the system. We could have, so I'm gonna break this down. We can have four external sources. Four external sources to consider for the sum of the forces onto the system. So the sum of the forces onto the system can be from gravity, force due to gravity. It can be forces due to pressure. It can be forces due to viscous properties or what we consider other. These other forces are typically reaction forces. Okay, so let's draw a pipe to kind of see what's going on here. So let's say our pipe goes like that. Okay, so now let's assess here. Uh, could we have gravity force due to the fluid? Yes. Could we also have a gravity force due to the pipe? Yes. Could we also have pressure forces? So here's the thing is this is a, a cut of a pipe, right? Whenever I do this kind of notation here, this is basically like a pipe is continuing here and is continuing here, right? Okay. Now, there are pressures inside the pipe that you need to consider, okay? Now, the way I want you to, sh to view this is like a Chinese finger trap, okay? Uh, have you ever, ever seen a Chinese finger trap? It looks kind of like this. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And then you put your finger in here, and you put your finger in here, and then it gets stuck, right? But you're putting your finger in this direction and in this direction, right? That's exactly how I want you to view these these pressure forces. You have a pressure force here. This is FP1, if this is location one. You also have a pressure force here, FP2. So again, acting inward towards the pipe. Now, what is the pressure force? This is from chapter two. Remember, our forces due to pressure is just going to be force is equal to pressure multiplied by the cross-sectional area. This pressures here are typically given or you would solve for them using the Bernoulli or energy equation, correct? So that would make FP1, just as like a side note here, that would make FP1 equal P1A1 and F P two P two A two. Okay. So we go back to our checklist here. We have gravity, we have pressure. Now we're talking about viscous forces. If our fluid is moving in this direction, which direction is our viscous moving? The opposite. The opposite. Mm -hmm. Perfect. It's going to be, 
in this direction. So this would be F friction. Okay. Does that make sense? So that would be our viscous force. Now other. Here's the thing. Okay. Now this pipe might be standalone. This could also be uh, I imagine like it, it's um, a fire hose, okay? Let's say you're holding a fire hose. Does anybody know how fast the velocity moves out of a fire hose, okay? It moves really, really fast, okay? In, I'm just gonna draw this in pencil. So it's moving in this direction very, very fast, which is basically causing you to move in which direction? Anybody ever seen a, a movie where they turn on the fire hose and then they just kick back? The opposite direction. Exactly. So you're moving, you are going to kick back in the other direction, okay? That in order for you not to move, so you, let's say you don't want to move, what is required? Equal amount of force. Anchor. force. An anchoring force, yes. So you need some kind of anchoring force. So let's say we don't know exactly uh, the location. We get a guesstimate. Let's say it's going to be anchor in the X direction. And let's say an anchor in the Y direction. So these are going to be your anchoring forces. So F-A-X and F-A-Y are anchoring or reaction forces, okay? Does everybody kind of see that? So, okay, so if I go back up here, um, and I'm gonna erase just this so we can maybe see, okay. Now, <laughs> can you just add all these forces together? What would be required, for instance, for FP2? You need to break this into an FP. Yes. You would need to break this into FP2Y as well as FP2X. You would also need to set your datum. And so if we go back, this is going to be positive. This is going to be negative. This is going to be negative. This is going to be positive. This is going to be negative. And this is going to be negative. Professor? Yes. Um, are we also going to be considering three dimensional directions? Three dimensional? No. <laughs> no. Um, for, we're just dealing with two dimensions. Yeah. Um, and that's enough, right? So essentially what I'm trying to, to say here is that you're going to have a left-hand side equation for two separate components, okay? So I'm going to put it all together here. So you're going to have uh, a sum of forces acting onto the system in the x direction, and you're going to have a sum of forces acting onto the system in the y direction. So you're going to have two separate momentum equations, okay? Really quickly, I just kind of want to bring it together to, to show um, a simplification of the equations. So what you're going to end up using, so let's say we have uh, steady conditions. So if the system is steady, what does steady mean again? No changes with respect to time. So if I go back to my equation up here, right? the very beginning here, that means that this component here will essentially go away if steady, okay? So I'm gonna break down this side to show you how this simplifies. We end up with the sum of the forces acting onto the system is going to be uh, the sum, and this is very important that you get the direction right, of velocity rho 
directional velocity a out minus the sum velocity density directional velocity a in okay this equation is written in both x and y directions so there's two equations here and again i want to highlight that this little v is just the magnitude however these velocities are directional which if you go back to this image here do you see this is a directional velocity in in the x but then this velocity at the end here coming out is going to have components it's going to have an x component and a y component yikes